Hey, I'm Scotty T from your Comedy Minute. I have a fantastic, talented, just, I can't even begin to tell you all this woman has done. <laughs> Angelica Skinora is here. Angelica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Scotty T. You are a comedian, an actor, a dancer. You have fitness videos. You are a social media maven. <laughs> Yes, is the dancing, you... the dancing, and the fitness it came before the comedy. Okay, yeah, because I have to go in order. Do you do plumbing work and electrical work too? Oh my god, I wish I did. I'm good at clogging toilets, but I can't seem to fix them. I, I'm being an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am. I have idiot. no practical skills. <laughs> Me neither. I just sit here and try and make people laugh. You're in Canada. I'm in Canada, but I also, I just moved to New I, York. I, 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 don't jump ahead. You'll piss me off and then we'll stop this damn thing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, you're in Canada. You were born and raised in Canada, right? Yeah, I was born and raised in Canada. Now, here's why I said don't jump ahead. Because your late one of your latest Instagram reels, you talk about getting a visa to the U.S. Yes, I do. <laughs> which took a long long time and um i finally got it so i was able i'm i'm in the process of fully relocating to new york so okay. i got a little place and i'm there probably a week out of every month now because i'm touring yeah um, I, got that, I got that written down we'll get into that you got a yeah. tour it's angelica's uh god don't want Angelica you did it so Skinora, well before we started recording. Angelica Skinora uh, is a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I decided to put on the poster. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, you're in good company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway, that whole USA visa thing, uh, that when, when you put that Instagram reel out, I immediately wrote, is, that has to be a lot of that has to be true. Oh, it's all true. It's all 100% true. And I think Americans, they don't. I, I had so many of my American comedian friends over the years go, just move. Why? What are you afraid of? And I go, I'm not afraid. I'm just, it's paperwork and it's a, a lot of proof. You got to really, um, there. you got to basically prove that you're an Academy Award winner before <laughs> they let you into the, they're like, have you won an Emmy? <laughs> well, then you can't come in, you know, so it's a lot of you got to make it kind of you got to collect um, a bunch of accolades in Canada before you can move. Really? And, and also you got to maybe win a competition or two in the okay. States. So uh, winning the Boston Comedy Festival gave me the ability to expedite the whole thing. And it was right. basically you done. Keep, you keep jumping ahead. I wanted to oh. start. It to, that's OK. I wanted to start at the beginning. Okay. You you started dancing when you were four, is that correct? Yep. And your family has a business, or, you know, a business, and you have danced all over the world. Yes, I have. I've danced Amazing. all over the world with, with my family. Yeah, my mom's a dancer. My dad's a musician. We have a dance company, and yeah. that's basically what I've what I've been doing since I was a kid. We used to go on tour and do performances. And um, so I've been very much used to being on stage my whole life. And uh, thing is, though, the dancing that I was doing is very serious, very deep. Yeah, very yeah, yeah. Artistic. But we're such a silly family. And I, I, I grew up kind of thinking, gosh, wouldn't it be great if I could perform and it was something kind of silly? And then, you know, that's how comedy kind of came into it. Well, yeah, that, that, I wanted to go on because... I think what came next was acting. You you started doing commercials and movies. Is that right? Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I had a, a lot of, um, I did very well for myself at first. And I thought, well, this is going to be easy. You know, I'll be a washed up cokehead in Los Angeles by the time <laughs> I'm 20, 25. And I'll have my mansion and life's going to be swell. And I'll have multiple divorces and millions of dollars and then, you know, I uh, don't forget it, it was, the overdose or two. <laughs> it's like acting just got it. You know, when you it, there's a lot of rejection in acting and I it, that started to really get in my head and there's no explanation as to why you get rejected. Yeah. And uh, I, I I got 
got really sick of just not having answers as to why people didn't want me. Okay. And um, so I started doing improv and stand up yes. so that I could work on first impressions and taking are, control of a room. Keep, you just keep jumping ahead. That's well, what geez, look, it's, I got a, the, it's a spiral. I got my crack staff puts this, this shit together. You'd think you would. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, this is called spiraling, Scott. No, you're, it's your comedy minute. And, and <laughs> next, obviously, the next question was when did you start doing comedy and was yes. there a catalyst? And I think you already, you know, as far as the catalyst, you got tired of the rejection from acting, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I okay. thought, well, it, you know, people hire stand ups as actors. And it's like, well, that was kind of my sidestep. And uh, okay. I, I, as a dancer that was facing several injuries, um, I, I could see where this was going. My mom is injury ridden. So yeah. am I. And um, it was getting less and less enjoyable to yeah. to dance. And I thought I need to figure something out. So I first stepped on a stand-up comedy stage about uh, 10 years ago now. It was 2014. Yeah. And I realized I had absolutely nothing to say. Um, and it was very hard for me to sustain. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So I quit for two years and then um, figured out what it was that I wanted to do and then came back eight years later and really committed. So I'm, I'm eight years in. You are killing it. You are killing it. I love your stuff. I and because nice. uh, and now uh, next up is you recently won the Boston Comedy Festival. Yes, congratulations. Yes. Thank you. That's that's a huge, and you're the first Canadian to do that, right? I'm the first Canadian woman to do it. So, okay. um, uh, the first Canadian to do it was Trix. Okay. Yeah. So Trix did it a few years back and then uh and then it was me so i'm the second canadian to to well, win that it. <laughs> doesn't tell people how funny you are i don't know what does um <laughs> as i mentioned you got the tour coming up and on the thing you put the uh, more american dates because... yes <laughs> oh it's all it's been my dream to have a my poster out with all my american dates for for a while now and to be able to actually do it and i created the tour myself yeah. um i i did all uh, of my bookings and um <laughs> and it's, uh, that's why i said i'm a lunatic on the poster because okay uh, no i i just love it and and you know i i don't i hate when i talk too much but i can relate to the and i did, wanted to go back because when i worked in the music business we'd get a band from europe or something and they could get like a 90 day visa to right. work in the United States. So I understand how important it is to you. And there's a big difference between Canada and the United States as far as breaking and, you know, that kind of thing. That's the thing is we're right. We're attached to each other and we're so we're, we're culturally, we have a lot of similarities, but yeah. it's still, we're, we're treated like, like, you know, complete, <laughs> there's a complete detachment. And I think somewhere down the line, you know, Canadian entertainers are fighting to have that change so that it's easier for Canadians to do it. But, you know, I, I, I figured, you know, just do it, just do it the hard way. You can't be waiting around forever. And um, it's been totally worth it. And it's finally nice. I feel like I finally get to live my life and um, take advantage of all these opportunities that well, people I, were offering I'm, to me. So, I'm having you on here. And if you want, I'll have you back in you know, a couple months. We'll see how you're doing. I'll keep, I'll keep doing all I can do to help. Oh, that's I so know nice. People, I know a few people here in the United States. We'll see. <laughs> you, got two, you got two YouTube channels, yeah. TikTok, Instagram, and I want to mention Angelica's Daily Surprise. Yes, I have Angelica's Daily Surprise. <laughs> that You, you got to tell the people about that because I my jaw dropped this morning. <laughs> You're rapping. <laughs> <laughs> Rat, we do everything. You're roller skating. <laughs> maybe we you could do. do maybe you could do some of that electrical work and plumbing. We're talking. About. Oh my gosh! I know. I should get a. I should get like a real uh, a laborer in to teach me something. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of different things. A lot of skills, like you mentioned, the freestyle rapping. We do all different kinds of dancing, cooking. It's always different. It's always a surprise and. Uh, 
Yeah, every single day. It's something, it's a channel I've had for a couple of years and we used to have it as an app. Okay. And we we realized we're like, what are we doing with this app? Just put it on YouTube. So we started that and it's starting to pick up some steam. And um, the TikTok's actually doing quite well. The Angelica's Daily Surprise TikTok. So yeah, I, I um, that's a lot thought. of fun. And um, yeah, there's like singing lessons. It's all some of it's very cute, very innocent. And some of it's not. Some of it's very like <laughs> only fans adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you mentioned that, but I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up. But it's like, you know, I got a lot going on there. And um, you certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> because like like we covered there and I, and I jumped over a little bit because you got so damn much going on uh, with the acting where you have done. In other words, I'm going to put when I air this, I'll put all the links to your TikTok, your two YouTube channels, your Instagram uh your imdb because you were in like a disney movie weren't you yeah i was in camp rock um yeah. i was also a uh, lead in a, a toronto international film festival film about charles manson i played susan atkins oh um, my god no it's funny because it's like my when people go who's your celebrity lookalike i go well <laughs> susan atkins unfortunately uh <laughs> and they go who and i go i google it for them and it's like oh yeah you know the woman that uh, cut the baby out of sharon tate <laughs> oh, that God. one we were yeah. we're twins pretty well, did much you see so. me jump? did you see me jump when you said charles manson <laughs> holy moly yeah and then i did a movie with uh, hayden christensen and emma roberts um right. and it was called little italy so Okay. And then um, I've guest starred on a, a couple TV shows. Yeah. And uh, yeah. You're an amazing, amazing, amazing person. I'm I'm so grateful to have you here. Although I got to admit, boy, I had a hell of a time getting all this together. <laughs> you really did, you, you did too much research, honestly. No, no, no. Because listen, to me, it's a matter of respect. You're going to come on my show. I want to pay the respect to you. And not only that, I, I, I kind of like people to see you know all sides of the comedian because we're going to get into some crazy stuff i got some stuff here mm. but i just like to cover because you 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 are amazing you have a lot of accolades there are people that dream of doing half of what you've done already oh thank you sometimes it's weird what what happens to you sometimes you're like it, it doesn't feel like it enough you always want more and then you kind of gotta stop and go no what I'm doing is enough. Everything yeah. is good. And um, I'm really happy with the direction that things are going in. Yeah, I, I worked in music business and it was eat, sleep, live, breathe music. I mean, in other words, Clive Davis and Arista, when he wanted Whitney Houston to be number one, you did it or you got fired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, and it was there was pressure. And, you know, like you said, and there were times and that's why. You know, I got tired of being screamed at when I worked at RCA. I was under, I was with Dave Matthews for three days, and I said, I can't take being screamed at anymore. Was Dave Matthews screaming at you? No. <laughs> no. No, Dave liked me. I could, I, could you imagine Dave Matthews being like a total diva behind the scenes? You know, oh, he's, I, I, he's I, on I, stage and... Uh, <laughs> And then he gets off and he's like, where's my water? My m, my you know? water, bitch. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Oh, I had my, I got a lot of stories I could tell you. <laughs> the anyway, music let's get back to you. And comedy, eight years now back, you did all together 10, but do you have a favorite show? I think, I, I know the answer, but I, go ahead and tell people. I think I know your favorite show. My favorite TV show? No, no, no. Favorite show. What is wrong with you, son? Did you take a foul tip as a youngster? What the hell do you, I like TV? I do mean, I care you watch? I took a few wooden spoons. Let's just say that. <laughs> okay. Favorite show that you performed? That oh, you, my. that you did. Well, I have to say. And then, and then, just because I'm go ahead, you like to go ahead, it's going to be your least favorite show. I have to say the Boston Comedy Festival finals was my favorite show that I've done so far. And it's um, that was one of those shows where it was just everything kind of just came together. You know, comedy is a wild animal and sometimes the audience has too much fun and then you're at the end and then they're tired. 
or you're right at the beginning and they're not warmed up yet. It was perfect. It was packed. Everything just felt incredible. It it felt like an out of body experience. So that's been my favorite show that I've now, done. Hold on, hang on, because that's not the one. There was one in Canada that you mentioned. Was it Massey Hall or something? Oh yes, Massey Hall came before Boston. So um, uh, okay. definitely, that's my second favorite show now. I'm just trying. Oh man, Shoot, the crack staff got it wrong. I, well, Massey Hall. Oh my god, I'm my favorite fire show I've guys. ever done in Canada is Massey Hall because that's our premier performance venue. A lot of legendary artists have mm -hmm. performed there, and to be able to perform there was like. Right. You know, I'm I'm just so happy and grateful. It really kicked off the year. It set a tone for 2024, and um, okay. uh, the good times kept on rolling. What yeah, and I look, say? you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you opened for Shane Gillis. That must have been pretty cool. Yes, I did. Yes, and this was like before he blew up. This was like 2019, okay. early 2019. So um, he wasn't the Shane Gillis that we all know yet. He had been fired from SNL and was starting to forge his own path. And uh, that was like one of my first breaks was uh, perform um, opening for Shane Gillis. And I've had the real the honor to to open for a lot of very important. Go ahead. Go ahead. Acts. So um, I hosted for Rachel Feinstein. She's amazing. Right. Um, I've opened for Joe List. Okay. Um, Christina Hutchinson. Yeah. Um, and um, do you know who Colin Mockery is? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay, there's a show here. Uh, whose line is it anyway? Yeah, I'm familiar with that show. We have it here in the states. Oh, so wait, like I do know son. Colin. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Yeah. I do know him. Yeah. So open for him a couple times That's as well. Cool. So That's cool. Yeah, it's a lot of big performances. And um, all right, all right. Enough yeah. of that. Enough of that. Least favorite show. <laughs> oh, God. Least favorite show. Hey, you can do a couple of those, too, if you want. Fuck. <laughs> this past Saturday at 7 p.m. <laughs> I saw <laughs> one where you had, had to perform at 8.30 in the morning. Oh, my God. I've done... It, 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 you know, I actually had somebody want to do one of these. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. I said, you know, I was like you. I don't think comedy should even start before like 7 p.m. <laughs> No, I think 8 p.m. Let's knock it down another hour. Okay. Like 7 p.m. sometimes is too early as well. I Yeah, I did a Christmas. I shot a Christmas special. Uh, like it was like a Christmas variety show. And I did a set and I had to perform at 830. And the audience was like pretty good. I wouldn't say that was my least favorite show I've ever done. It was it was good. I think when people have cameras on them, they like perk yeah. up a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, um, I used to do, I used to go to this show and it was kind of like a training ground for me. And it was Sunday nights at 10 PM and, um, and it was called the danger room and it, you'd get, it was like a heckling show. And okay. this was kind of the beginning of heckling shows. And this was like 2018 and, uh, you just get heckled into the ground. And this was back when I was still quite new. So yeah. I couldn't really I didn't have the tools to really go at people or start strong. I'd kind of get on stage and go, Oh, you know, right. but if I didn't have that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am. So yes, those were horrible shows. Um, mm. But they were good, bad, if that makes sense. But sometimes I just do shows. I'm like, it's just awful. You you, 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 you tell one joke. You can just tell right away that I'm like, oh, you guys aren't fun. And I, I lash out at crowds, too. And I, I every time I go on stage, I go, if this goes bad, Angelica, do not lash out. Do not lash out. And then I go on stage. I don't get the laugh within the first minute. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is that? Like, I, I freak out. I fr And people enjoy watching me freak out, which pisses me off. Even really, more. well, I saw one video where you hugged a, a heckler. She she seemed like she was pretty drunk. I hugged a heckler and I've motorboated a woman. <laughs> Did you see that one? <laughs> no, I didn't. It's I, usually I, I'm um, already envious though. Why couldn't I be there? I'd usually, have been happy to participate. <laughs> there was I was going through. There was a brief period of time where I was like attracting these very drunk 
uh, blonde women in their early 60s and they would they love engaging with me. Yeah. And uh, there was a while where I was getting physical with with a few of them, but it's never <laughs> bad. I always, yeah, I did hug. I hugged a heckler. No, Cuz I, I don't think I think it's so crazy when people are like Will you shut up? You're ruining the show. And then it's awkward for everybody. And then they got to go. So I was at the dentist the other day. And it's like, this is so weird for me. When when somebody goes from eviscerating a person to back to their regularly scheduled material, I try to lead with love when it comes to the heckler. And hopefully that shuts them up. Well, now I'm confused. I want to come see you perform live because... If you don't get those opening couple laughs, you go at them like a spider monkey. <laughs> I love spider monkeys. Yeah. How did you know I love monkeys? I love monkeys. No, you know, I actually have a guy coming up tomorrow that we recorded it a week or two ago, and he teaches a comedy class. Okay. And he, somebody came through the door, and he gave him instructions, don't tell me your name or anything, we're going to start. And the guy said, hey, I'm Rick. <laughs> and it pissed him off and i said i heard you punched him in the face <laughs> <laughs> what a way for a comedy class kind of like you getting up there laugh what the hell's wrong with you laugh <laughs> yeah no sometimes you just get up there and they're looking at you like you're a taxidermied animal or something it's uh i'm always like what what's running through your head right now but i understand you know seven o'clock not enough time for the alcohol to metabolize into yeah. the old system and you always you always have a glass of wine <laughs> or a beer <laughs> i uh yeah usually <laughs> it's just a prop <laughs> i usually do except not these <laughs> days uh because i am expecting a baby Oh, congratulations. Thank you. I'm expecting I didn't know I've that. Congratulations. To, I've had to stop drinking. I just haven't announced I haven't made a post yet until I find out what the gender is. And I'm okay. finding out the gender on Monday. A lot All of people right. know. Good. I won't put this out until we get the get the reveal. Check this out. <laughs> it's in there. It's congratulations. In there. I, I that's breaking news. People will know. So uh, basically I'm doing this whole tour. And I'm going to be visibly pregnant, uh, and um, and then I'm going to have the baby, and then um, wait a couple months, and then I'll be back on the road again. And my fiance is a phenomenal comedian, um, and we tour a lot together. Uh, we just did Edmonton uh, last weekend, and um, so we're we're going to do like very much like a me, him, okay, and the baby cool. type. <laughs> If you can talk him into coming on my little show, I'd love it. I won't be. Mad oh, for you. sure, for okay. sure, he would love let me, that. Let, yeah, let me move on because there's, there's, uh, you know, when I watch these, you know, I like there with the the visa and everything. I don't know which is true or not, but you do a bit. This is an old bit you did <laughs> about your aunt was Miss Malta. Yes, she was. My aunt was Miss Malta. Is that true? Is that is that story true? Yes. So she was Miss Malta. That's crazy. Tell the yeah. folks. Crazy. And she went to the Miss Universe pageant, and um, she hit one of the uh, contestants and got her title taken. She, you do a bit about that. It's just hilarious. I used to talk about it a lot because it was like one of the bigger, funnier stories in my life at the time. And then I go, you should see her now. She looks like Joe Pesci in drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that that story, though, I thought, I wonder if that's true. Yeah. yeah because yeah. She, didn't, she didn't place or something. She punched one of the other girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, the Maltese are vicious folk. Um, yeah. Not very friendly. Even, you know how people like when they're part of a cultural demographic and they corner that market comedically and then all those people, like I've noticed Filipino comedians, you know, they post about their show and all the Filipinos come out and buy tickets and support. Maltese people, I'm like, hey everyone, I'm Maltese. I'm, 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 I'm doing a show and they're like, 
oh, what, you're going to make fun of us? Well, I'm not coming. I don't support <laughs> any of this. I just get like hate messages from Maltese people. Oh, you're making fun of our culture. We were the gas station of World War II. Have a little respect. I'm just like, I can't even. Yeah. Can't even with you. They're hostile. They're hostile. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you, because I'm curious. I have another question I have too, but and and I'm just curious because you love doing stand up, but you also do like right before I come on, you have a new Instagram reel where you're doing a character. And I just wonder, do you have a preference as far as what you like doing more? Well, the thing is, I just got a new green screen, as you can see, but it's Thanks. like I I like doing characters. I've just never um, had the time or the patience to really sit down and do them. And, um, you know, I always have stand up videos and I like clipping stand up videos. But I've noticed recently people react more and there's more traction to holding the camera in front of you, doing a direct to camera message. Um, people react more to content created specifically for Instagram rather than if you had a kick ass stand up reel which I was very stubborn for a while. I was like, no, no, if I get a, stub a, a stand up reel, I'm posting that and that should be enough. I'll do one direct to camera. It does better than any stand up reel and it was a fraction of the work. So I'm, I'm trying to get more into that. And also it doesn't burn material. And I'm also waiting for three 4K multicam videos of stand up that I have and I'm like, I'm try I want those videos to come to me so that I can post some little clips. It's it's funny because it's like I get these jokes and I become protective of them and I don't want to release them. Uh, so I'll release very few written jokes, but most of it's crowd work. Yeah. And it's I find the target is constantly shifting online. And uh, because we're in the process of like relocating to New York, you know, now more than ever, all the clubs are looking at at that what I've got going on on there. So I'm just constantly trying to develop it and keep people engaged. Yeah. It's funny. You'd bring that up and I want to pay props to Mr. Rue, Sean Ruiz, who uh, he's from that area. And he's the one when you won the Boston comedy festival. Um, I have a pretty decent rap with, with people. Yeah. That come on. And I said, you know, could you get any female comedians? Cause I've, uh, you know, I want to have female comedians on. I, I, I like the interaction with a female comedian. Uh, I, I like one on one, period. I don't care whether it's a man or a woman, but uh, he, he, and he had that same philosophy as far as burning material. As a matter of fact, he was on and he didn't do one joke. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, Not on Zoom. I'm not doing it. <laughs> kind of like you. You got to give a little uh, to get a little, you know? And, yeah, uh, no, I know. I get it. I yeah. get it. I get no, it. No, he's been so um, supportive ever since we met, and he's always commenting on my things. And He's like, a great guy. He's yeah. a great guy. And yeah. when you come to New York, I'm sure he's going to, you know, and again, I, I will do everything. Not that I can do a lot, but anything I can do, I will too. I'm going to be uh, coming back to Boston hopefully soon. That'll be post-baby. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like pretty booked up now until Feb. Yeah. And uh, then I'm going to hunker down and pop this will, little fucker again, out. I'll include everything, all the tour dates, because you are booked. You're solid, like you said. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm well, uh, one last little thing, and then we'll get to your comedy minute. I don't want to keep you too long. Uh, something about bald guys. <laughs> Look at you. That's a good amount of hair. <laughs> That's a good amount. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I can grow hair, damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good hairline. <laughs> I wanted to impress you. Actually, no. It won't work because you like bald guys. I'm open to bald men. I That's yeah. the thing is I, I like bald men. And I think it's unfair for women to write them off. Right. You know, women, we face a lot of scrutiny from, from men. Sure. And uh, 
we do all kinds of crazy things to ourselves, but I think, you know, it's important to see bald men and acknowledge them as real people. Well, it's like short guys or I, I heard recently about that. He's a 10, but he doesn't like cats. So he's a nine or right. he's a yeah. 10, but he doesn't like puppies. So he's an eight. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As long yeah, as my, my, my guy's a 10. He's just bald. Okay. Well, my son, and I hate to admit this, my son was very young. I want to say maybe 10, 11 years old. Okay. And I saw this beautiful woman. I said, man, she's beautiful. She's a 10. He goes, nope. He said, she got two kids. You got to take two. She's an eight. He said that? <laughs> He said that. He said that. Wow. That was his theory. Wow. <laughs> she could be the prettiest woman in the world. But if she had, nope, two kids down to an eight. <laughs> wow. That's impressive for a young, for a kid. I don't know where, I don't know where he got that. I didn't feel it. I said, I thought she was a 10. Wow. That, that must that's have been a... his schoolmates. Yes. I can't wait to have these heartwarming discussions with my future spawn. <laughs> I'm sure they'll say some wild shit. Oh, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my friend, we don't have a lot of time left. So I want to make sure that you mention anything you want to mention. I think we covered a lot, but if there's anything we missed, please cover it. And then you told me that you got a special Your Comedy Minute for me. Yes, I do. Don't okay, worry. Well, I know you make sure very... we cover. Make sure we cover everything first, Angelica. I want to make sure we cover everything. Okay. Um, well, I'm headlining at Rogue Island Comedy Festival in yep. a couple of weeks. Um, and then um, after that, going to La Laughing Skull in Atlanta. And then after that, end of October, I'm hosting for Derek Stroop at Zany's Chicago. Yeah. And then um, I'm headlining at the Cleveland Comedy Festival. Yep. I'm headlining at Comedy Corner Underground in Minneapolis. Amazing. And then I'll be doing some shows in New York. And that should take us to the holiday season. But I'm super excited to headline at all these festivals and these yeah. clubs uh, for the first time ever. It's uh, going to be amazing. So all the Have tickets are now Have you ever been to Cleveland available. before? Um, yes, I actually okay. won. I won the Cleveland Comedy Festival two yeah. years ago. So I won uh, Best Cleveland. Comedian. And then um, they tried to have me to headline last year and I couldn't legally do it. And okay. I said, when I get my working papers, I'll let you know. And they go, please uh, let us know. And they actually helped me a lot uh, yeah. with my visa as well. And um, so I got it and they go, oh, all right, we're bringing you to headline this year. So I'm you very are, excited to you be You are able. fabulous. And, and, and I can't thank you enough for coming on my little dog and pony act. I really, <laughs> I appreciate the heck out of it. But I think it's time. Okay. Angelica Skinora. Did I do it right? Angelica yes. Skinora. Or can we just go jelly or skinooch? Yeah, I like both. I grew up with jelly. And, uh, you know, there's this comedian uh, named Sandra Badalini. And she, when I first started comedy, she goes, yeah, I like your name, but it's long. She's like, we got to shorten it. She goes, skinooch. And she started yeah. calling me Skinooch, and that kind of caught on. So, yeah. well, on Instagram, a lot of them. So, let's just go, Skinooch, your comedy minute. Go ahead. Okay. So, one of my favorite jokes, it's uh, not mine. Um, <laughs> Sorry. It's a, it's a joke from Roy Wood Jr., and uh, he has a joke about Idris Elba. Um, and he finding out when Idris Elba was British, he goes, I didn't know this guy was British. You know, one day he was doing an interview and he said, yes, for breakfast, I like to have me a big bowl of beans. And <laughs> the accent just killed yeah. me. Um, I love Roy Wood Jr., very underrated comedian, although he's getting a lot of shine now. And okay. I just love accents. I love bits with accents. I have a joke where I do my therapist, who's a Latina and um, I, I think ahead. it's racist. What? Do, Go ahead, do, do it joke? real quick. Go ahead and do it real quick. Okay, so um, you got to get yourself a Latina therapist uh, right. because she will justify all your actions. Okay. Right. You won't have to change. It's incredible. I went to this woman. <laughs> I said, I'm having issues with conflict resolution and my temper. And she was like, I don't know, honey, these people you've been dealing with sounded like they had it coming. <laughs> 
her homework is super fun too. Other therapists would tell me to meditate or journal, but she's <laughs> like, no, no, you go fuck his brother. <laughs> so oh my better. God. That is dynamite. You, you do that, that accent, you do that perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like the I've one I just watched before I came on, the, the woman on the plane. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like doing voices. That was great. That was great. Yeah. Well, look, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I mean that. And your fiance, if he wants to come on, I'd love to have him. For sure. You want to mention him real quick? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name's Cameron Phoenix. That's his okay. real name. It's not a stage name. Okay. Um, and you can find him at cam.phoenix on Instagram. Okay. He's got a really successful Twitch stream with a, a, a very viral comedian named Che Dorena. So they have a stream okay. called The Little Dinky News. And uh, he's touring around with me. And we're going to be mommy and okay. daddy soon. And he's well, hilarious. And, and he's funnier it, than me, which is oh, important. No, stop it. <laughs> put, put put a bug in his ear. I'm going to get in touch with him. I'm going to have him on. And let me stop the recording, though. I thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I want to stop the recording because I want to talk to you for a minute off the air, okay? Okay. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, thank and good luck with the baby. Oh, thank you. Cool. All right.